Welcome to the Two Blokes Chatting Radio Show on 94.7 The Pulse. Music, interviews, news and, well, two blokes chatting. Now, here are the two blokes. This is uh, is Two Blokes Chatting on the wireless this morning, 94.7 The Pulse. And Robert, we are in the presence of His Majesty. We are are indeed. Is it Uh, His Majesty or Your Worship? I can't remember exactly (laughs) what he is. uh, We're about to come through Blokes Chatting. Uh, Geelong Cricket Club has gone through a a bad month, a bit of tumultuous turn-up, round-table discussion stuff that hasn't gone well, so it's needed a bit of stability and strength, and they've gone back to where it all started. The inaugural president of the Geelong Cricket Club, as they pushed into Premier Cricket, Michael King, is back in the chair and is with us this morning. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, and uh, what a great start. Frank Sinatra, I love Frank Sinatra. Yeah, he's good value. Yeah, and uh, poor old Nancy doesn't get much of a look in. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't her birthday. It's no, it wasn't her birthday, no, fair enough too. And uh, the, the most disturbing thing, Michael, it's Neil here, by the way, is Rob sitting across the the desk singing I love you and with <laughs> with eyes that made me just a little bit uncomfortable to be honest. Oh, uh, that is a disturbing image. <laughs> Very disturbing. It's a disturbing image at the best of times but when he's singing I love you that's a real worry. Uh, Michael you've only had about five days in uh, your new role but uh, it's typical of you come at the hour come off the man. Um, clearly the last month hasn't been the finest in the 25 or six years of, of Geelong's premier cricket uh, performance. Um we won't go, need to go into the detail because it was not necessary, but just the need for you to step in uh, to the breach, how, how did you go dealing with that personally? Um, look, and look, there's no shying away. It's been difficult times for the club of, of recent times uh, and probably first up, it, it's really important. I acknowledge um, uh, the time that three really good cricket people and the volunteer time they gave the club uh, should be acknowledged and, and is being acknowledged, uh, but it has been difficult. And so we had a, a meeting on Tuesday, and David Kelly, a, a former president of Longstanding at the club, uh, uh, was, uh, I guess, jumped into the breach there for four weeks as chair. And um, again, with the committee, went around and tapped people on the shoulders. And I was very grateful and surprised and humbled to be tapped on the shoulder. and Really excited to be back there, to be honest. So, Michael, there's things to be done, but but where does the list start for priorities? Because um, the three people uh, you mentioned, Paul and, and Kim Blaine and David Barnes, who was very well known around Geelong c- cricket circles, found that in their minds they couldn't continue in the position. So something clearly was aggrieving them. Is mm. Is that the key priority for you to get to the core of that and make sure it's either tucked away or dealt with, whichever way it needs to be done? Yeah, look, I think the first thing is you don't sweep things under the carpet. Uh, and I guess part of, uh, and it's not just myself coming in as president, we have uh, four other really good cricket people, a couple from out the region coming in, and it's a, a real great opportunity and difficult circumstances for them to step forward. And, and I thank them. And really it's a matter for all of us to just... Uh, sit back, listen, uh, identify what the issues are and then just, I guess, create pathways for everyone at the club to, to be able to, um, I guess, um, uh, give people the opportunity at, at an elite level for all our players, both men and women, uh, to just feel, I guess, uh, comfortable in the positions they are. And um, I guess I'm really gratified by, uh, even though coming into the club in... in uh, difficult circumstances. It's a really well-run club. The club, I guess, has never been stronger uh, financially, and there's good systems in place. Clearly, there's been some issues between different individuals, but uh, as regrettable that is, that that happens at all sporting clubs in all codes throughout Australia from time to time. So I think it's a matter of a bit of a deep breath, uh, just uh, sit down, really listen to people, and then. Uh, between the new, I guess it's a blended committee. There's there's five of the existing committee uh, still in, in place and there's uh, six new people as such coming in in a variety of roles and uh, real strong cricket backgrounds. And I think everybody, no, nobody, whoever they, they are, likes these things to happen. They do happen. 
but you acknowledge that they are uh, has happened and you really just set a vision for coming forward and I guess the people coming in uh, are all new and that's that's good and exciting and um, as you touched on before there's uh, just a lot of challenges ahead for the club but good challenges and there's a lot of really good things uh, again off the shoulders of the of both Kim and Paul Blaine and David, but equally of the committee already there and the new people coming in, looking forward to just creating um, a really good uh, framework for uh, young players, both men and women, to be able to reach their maximum ability through a really good coaching setup. There's some great coaches, and uh, so I'm looking forward to really just listening and tying all that together and, and moving uh, forward in a very positive manner. Uh, Michael, one of the uh, the problems that this can create is is an effect on the playing group. Mm. Are you comfortable at this stage that all those issues, as you said, that they are to be dealt with, not swept under the carpet? Are they distant enough that the playing group should be able to function without any distraction yep. through this period? Look, it, it's only early days, but my initial observations is I've got a really uh, well-run cricket program. Uh, I think just talking to one or two of the parents, and it's really important not just to talk to the uh, players but the parents themselves, is that uh, their really main concentration has been on cricket. And, uh, uh, and and so it would appear to me in the early days, my initial observations, that the cricket side's still going uh, uh, ahead. And, uh, I guess what I was enormously gratified by coming back into the club was seeing the number of ex-players involved in the coaching panel. So it, got a, a, a new coach this year from Melbourne, Nick Speak, who's doing a really wonderful job, uh, along with Travis Ag and Aaron Croft, who are both uh, original players in the very first year of the club, and then just to look up and see Luke Muller and Trent Walries and Mark Carson coming back, just assisting in the coaching, that was enormously uh, gratifying to me, and a real good indication from a playing perspective that they're on top of things. I, I think it's really with COVID and the, and the lead up to the cricket season, the disruption we've all had, um, it's been uh, difficult for the players, um, I guess, they're in teams of 10 and you really only got to be in that team of 10 until recent restrictions have been eased. So some of the um, uh, players have hadn't met other players because they weren't in that group of 10 until recent times. So from what I've seen, they've gelled really well, been down at training and they're really on top of the game where... Been, been a bit unfortunate. The first two teams we've played are probably, you know, probably uh, two of the top four teams from last year in Carlton and Essendon. And, you know, we've still made 275 and lost in the first game. So uh, I, I, to, to answer your question, I think my initial observations of the play, I think everyone's a bit of a relief that uh, there's a bit of you know, structure in place in terms of appointed positions uh, and uh, the players are just ready to go on and I'm uh, really encouraged by how strong the coaching um, setup has been put in place and the players seem to be just going full full bore at that next elite level that they're at from coming from South West Victoria and around Geelong. So I guess, I guess the other thing too is that at the moment, everywhere you turn, it, there is disruption, there is uncertainty, there are people sort of putting things back together again. If there needed to be um, some activity around committee level, now is probably not a bad time for it to be happening because everyone is in some level of adaptation to a new world and whatever that means. I guess from that point of view, the players would have been all over the, over the place anyway. A bit of com committee change probably is just the least of their concerns. Yep. Look, they're really concentrating on playing as they should. Uh, they've got strong leadership there from the ex-players and the coaching staff there, which is great. And they're really, uh, you know, as it skips up a different level as Premier Cricket is... And I guess our real objective is to uh, have the best um, coaching and facilities in place to let them play to their, their maximum ability and then hopefully go on and, and get, ultimately get to the baggy green. So I think we've got probably the best uh, training facilities of any Premier Club in Australia. And I guess one of the exciting parts coming up over the next two years, although there'll be a little bit of initial disruption, but with the construction of Stage 5, I believe we'll have the best Premier Club uh, facilities in terms of grandstand, players change rooms, off-field facilities of any Premier Club in uh, in Australia. So that's exciting from an off-the-field perspective uh, as well. Uh, Michael, on a personal level, you, uh, you're a very busy man. 
anyway. If uh, you you run your own business, you're probably at the stage where of your life where you're thinking, well, I'd like to relax and put the feet up a little. How how tough has it been for you to commit to? And I imagine a minimum of 20 hours a week is probably going to need to be put into this task. Um, how's that sitting with business, family, and uh, and relaxation balance? Uh, well, it was probably a good time in the sense that my daughter's really taken over the, the, the running of our family business, so I can sit back and I've got a bit of time. And I, I think what I'm really enjoying, again, in the early days is that uh, recommittal, but just a chance to meet, and there's really good people, I guess, at all sporting clubs throughout Australia, but Geelong Cricket Club's no no different, and it's great to be able to, to be back within... I guess cricket circles and meeting different people that you're sort of forced to meet because of the position you're in. So uh, I'm really enjoying that particular aspect of it, and the family's very supportive of the role role back there. So that bit's been good, and I'm really looking forward to, I guess, meeting new people I haven't met before. Excellent, uh, Michael. We wish you all the very best. We'll probably touch base with you about February. See how things are going. We're looking forward to speaking to. Nick Speak, just after yep. Christmas. We've had him on a couple of times and he's quite excited about his new challenge and uh, we'll probably touch base with him yep. due, during January as well. But uh, good luck to you all and uh, in putting this together very, very quickly because we need this place functioning well for Geelong yep. Cricket. Yes, look, thank you very much and it will. And if you could play a bit of Frank Sinatra again next time, that'd be good. <laughs> good on you, mate. <laughs> we'll remember that. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Michael. All the very best. See you both later. Bye-bye.